Sadhguru, a lot of what you've said, you've related it to what the modern world is doing to us in the way it's teaching us, in the way we are no, behaving. No, I'm, I'm not really... See, there is no such thing as modern world and ancient world, okay? At every time in society, there is a certain set of people who are trapped in their own logic. And they think anything outside that is, that is insane. Every generation thought somebody was modern, somebody was conservative, somebody was, <laughs> you know, liberal, somebody was conservative, like this. No generation has not had the division. So, I'm not truly saying modern in that sense. Every society has that. Okay, let me say prudes and not so prudish people. So, being prudery, people are thinking in terms of somebody is restrained in his thought and action. I'm saying the moment you employ your intellect, you're super restrained. Silly things, people are think right now, very silly things, socially, internationally, people think they're profound things because you have a constipated intelli intelligence and overused intellect. When we say intelligence, now this little plant which produces a fragrant flower, you're discounting that intelligence. There is more intelligence in the air around you than in your brains. Yes, there is more memory in the air around you than in your brains. There's more memory in the epithelial cell of your body than in your brain. This is a fact. So, the question I was going to ask was, I wasn't born to be trapped by my intellect <laughs> because it's it's a tough question for me it's like what you're saying is you're trapped by intellect and I agree with you because a large part of our our questions to ourselves is just you know circles within the mind the mind asks the mind answers the mind doubts the mind asks the mind answers I wasn't born like that and what you're saying that is are you saying that is not the natural way to be and if it's not the natural way to be why did I become like that? Because there is no such thing as human nature. Being a human being means it's a flux. For all other creatures on this planet, nature has drawn two lines. Within that band, they must live. For a human being, only one line, the bottom line, there is no top line. So there is no description of what is a proper human being. There's no definition like that. Everybody thinks everybody else is wrong, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there is no definition that this is what a good human being is. People are always trying to arrive at it. But when you impose the definition, all you will get is rebellion from many, many places. Every generation tries to arrive at what is a good human being, and the next generation comes and says, that's rubbish, that's not what the way we want to be and they want to be some other way, just to beat this, the trap of that. And they create a new trap. A new trap looks like freedom because it's a new place. After some time, you know the pain of that and then you want to create a new one. I'm talking about employing your intelligence without the limitation of your intellect. The human existence is a phenomenal intelligence. See, right now you're here, you can't do it with your thought. You can't conduct your breath with your thought. You can't beat your heart with your thought. You can't make your kidneys and liver work with your thought, can you? No. They're way beyond your percept... your thinking process, isn't it? So I'm saying your thought is useful only for certain aspects of life. The thing is, you're taking it beyond its ambit and making it look stupid. It is not stupid, it's a wonderful process. The significance of being human, one of the significances of being human is we're capable of thought and conscious thought. It's wonderful. But a foot scale is wonderful if you are measuring your height, but not for the ocean. It's a wrong thing, that's all. Nothing wrong with the foot scale, it's very useful. If you're a tailor, it's useful. If you're a mason, it's useful. If for so many things it's useful, but if you're an oceanographer, don't go with the foot scale, you're going to waste your time and life and come with wrong conclusions. 
you're trying to use your intellect beyond its ambit, that's all. So, you will end up coming to conclusions. Rather than perceiving, you are arriving at conclusions and thinking that is true. Whatever conclusions you make have nothing to do with reality. You are making conclusions with the limited data of information that you have gathered. It doesn't matter if you've eaten the libraries of the planet. Still, what you have with you compared to what the existence is, what the creation is, it is just a minuscule of knowledge. With this knowledge, you don't try to make a conclusion. It's bound to be wrong. Maybe you earned a PhD in a university, but you cannot know truth like that. You cannot know the nature of existence like that. So the best way is to open a window and simply look. You see at least one dimension of life, the way it is, not the way you think it is. Because the way you think is essentially dependent upon the limited data that you have gathered in your brain in a memory system rather.